Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's your boy Kush, back at it again with another New York Giants video. Another slight, slight kind of update video I want to say. I'm going to be going over a couple of Joe Judge's quotes from uh, today's article on Giants.com. Him talking about the special teams mostly, you know, Graham Gano officially signing on. His thoughts on the Cody Court injury and whatnot. And I'm also, uh, before I do that, I'm going to go over a player that caught my eye while I was watching today's um basically kind of inside training camp episode or whatever they call it on the Giants YouTube channel. Which, by the way, thank God for, you know... The Giants YouTube channel and I guess the, the Giants in general sort of bringing some of the training camp to us since we can't be there. You know, thank you for that, New York Giants. Um, today they focused on the running backs, and while one running back did kind of sort of stick in my mind, the player that really caught my attention was a tight end later on in that video. So you guys make sure to go check that out. Before I start, I want to say channel memberships are available. Shout out to my first members, Nikki, Die Art Giants fans, and OGR Sports. Check out merch if you want to. Only official merch will be at teespring.com. The link is in the description down below and let's get into it. So first things first, let's talk about the running back that kind of stuck in my mind um, while they were going over this special look at the running backs in today's practice. I want to say all of them look good, then again, they were running pretty simple drills. And, you know, uh, the two guys that were kind of commentating it, Paul Tino and David Deal, they acknowledged that they were running simple drills. But, I mean, at this stage in the in the offseason where it's very much close to the beginning of the regular season, but they're still beginning the offseason in a sense because they've only been practicing on the field for a week now, it's understandable. And also, David Deal brought up a really good point. He said that when you practice the basics and the fundamentals, the simple things a thousand times over, it becomes basically muscle memory and you're not going to mess it up whenever you do it on the field and it's going to have a bigger impact on the field so you know the, the running back group today with Burt Burns they were doing really simple things the guy that stuck in my mind not necessarily because of what he did but because of what David Deal said was Deion Lewis who as of right now should be the running back number two and I probably will be the running back number two entering the season the reason Deion Lewis stuck in my mind is because Deal said Lewis is here not only to prove himself to the league but also prove to himself that he's still a good you know all-around running back that he could actually run the ball as well as catch it we all know he was brought in here I think for his pass catching ability but a point that deal brought up was that if he's on the field and the defense automatically knows we're gonna be passing the ball to him or it's a passing down that's too much of a red flag so the Giants are gonna be have to you know they're gonna have to use him on first and second down a couple times they're gonna have to mix him in there a good amount with Saquon obviously not so much that he's gonna interrupt any of Saquon's or take away too much of Saquon's time or anything I don't think you know I don't think that's ever gonna happen but he is going to be used quite a bit in the run game, I think, so that they could actually effectively use his passing game. Now, I already kind of expected and I already kind of knew he was going to take away from Saquon's passing game, you know, take that load off of him. But he might also be used to take away some of the um, running game as well from Saquon. Once again, not too much, but it's something to keep in mind. I mean, don't be surprised if Dion comes out here, has like a anywhere from a 300 to 400 yard rushing and maybe 400 yard receiving type of season, which would be very, very good for a backup running back. What I'm thinking, though, is how much is he going to be mixed in? How is he going to be mixed in? How much is Saquon going to be seeing the field? Because we're all kind of hoping, kind of selfishly for on my part, hoping that Saquon just gets the ball every single play and has an amazing comeback season, you know, MVP type season and whatnot. But obviously, with that comes a lot of risks physically. And so, Dion, I guess he's going to be a lot more useful than I initially thought when we brought him in. Because if there was any, you know, type of running back I wanted them to bring in to back up Saquon, it was going to be a Brandon Jacobs type Somebody that could really take the hit so Saquon wouldn't have to take it. It looks like Dion is going to be doing that in a different type of way, you know, either way. And then the second player later on in that video, which was with the tight end group that caught my eye, was Caden Smith. And the reason Caden Smith caught my eye is because this guy is a lot better in blocking than I thought he was before. The specific drill the tight ends were running were actually going up against the outside linebackers. So you had guys like Caden Smith, Levon Taiolo, Evan Ingram, and one other tight end whose name is slipping my mind, going up against Kyler Fackrell and Marcus Gold. Uh, O'Shane Zimenez, Carter Coughlin, and Lorenzo Carter. So maybe there was two tight ends I didn't remember, but the three main ones, you know, obviously I got them in my mind. The reason that uh, 
Caden Smith caught my eyes because he by far in that little like what two minute snippet we saw he by far performed the best out of all of them in the blocking he literally got Carter Coughlin so down pat that he shoved them to the ground and basically pushed Carter Coughlin to the ground in the blocking scheme and then when he went up and against Lorenzo Carter it was all technique rather than kind of powering uh, because Carter Coughlin he's a smaller outside linebacker so he actually had the power on him but when he came up against Lorenzo Carter who was definitely bigger than Caden Smith it came down to technique and just using the technique nice footwork nice hand placement keeping his arms inside you know keeping it in the middle of his body something that Evan Ingram actually had a problem with uh, Smith was able to just basically re redirect Carter and didn't even let him get to the coach that was standing in place of uh, the quarterback. So I was really impressed with Kane Smith. Levine Toyola, the, guys, the guy that we brought in specifically for his blocking, he had a little bit of trouble. At, at one point, he basically had like a horse collar tackle, I think on O'Shane Zimenez, and then he struggled with Marcus Golden. I could be mixing up the names, but the two guys he went up against, he didn't perform as well as I thought he would. Once again, it was a two minute snippet. God knows how they do overall, but from that two minute snippet, Caden Smith is the best all around tight end we have in this roster when you count blocking ability and receiving ability. And because of that, he's going to be seeing the field a lot more, I think. We're going to have a lot of two tight end sets where it's going to be tight ends blocking for Saquon and whatnot. So, yeah, man, I'm getting more and more not necessarily excited for Caden Smith because until Evan Ingram goes down, he's still going to be the backup. But I'm, I'm definitely a lot more pleased with what I'm seeing from him. And then finally, in this portion of the video, let's get into Joe Judge's quotes. I'm going to pull them up right now. So the article goes, we've known about Gr Graham for a long time, Judd said. Obviously, T-Mac and Dave have experience with him personally back in Carolina. Uh, T-Mac, of course, referring to Thomas McGahee. And this was something that completely slipped my mind. I think everybody knows that Dave Gunnelman has some type of personal experience with uh, Graham Gano. But Thomas McGahee was, of course, a special teams coordinator in Carolina before and worked with, uh, worked with Graham Gano back there. Um, the quote continues, that goes a long way. He's someone who wasn't available early on in the process. Gano was released by the Panthers on July 30th. Then when he became available, we obviously had him on our radar. It was fortunate that it worked out the way it did. He's a competitive guy. He's a talented guy. He obviously missed a little time due to injury. I'm anxious to get him on the field and get him going. He's a big leg guy who has experience. He hits a consistent straight line ball with a solid flight. The ball gets a good lift. He's made improvement throughout his career. Obviously, I'm going to take what Joe Judge is saying here with 100% face value because the dude is a special teams guy. I'm pretty sure he knows what he's talking about when it comes to the kicker position. Gano is 33, which Judge believes places him at the perfect age for group for his position. I think with any specialist, kicker, punter, snapper, you really see the best ball as they get toward their 30s. They've had time to really develop, to understand the league, to really understand how their body works, to structure it for the duration of the season. They understand situationally how they have to stay fresh and in the moment. Young guys may have had a little bit more pop in their legs at the time. Young guys may have a little bit more raw ability, but when it comes to NFL specialists, they really start peaking around those 30s ages right there. That's why a lot of them even have the ability to play into their early 40s. Now, Gano, of course, once again, is in his 33 uh, age 33 season right now hopefully if he recovers well enough from his injury last year we're just basically going to get the Graham Gano of you know the past several years which has been a really good kicker in the NFL like just said he has a good amount of power and accuracy to him I mean we know about the power we faced it unfortunately in the 2018 season in the famous game where Christian McCaffrey ran the ball on a fourth down didn't get the conversion but the refs gave it to them anyway and then Gr Gano won the game on a 61 yard field goal it's going to be nice to have a kicker on our side that can hit a 61-yard field goal now. I mean, yeah, I'm definitely happy that Judge completely approves of it. Not sure if that comment about early 40s is kind of hinting towards maybe they want to keep Gano around long term. We shall see. Then it moves on to the Corey, Cody Core section. Core was just 26 but will miss the entire season after turning his Achilles tendon in practice yesterday. He was placed on injury reserve today. Core joined the Giants just prior to the start of the 2019 season and led them with 8 special teams tackles, 6 solo. A wide receiver, Core also caught 3 passes. One of them I think was a touchdown from Eli. I hate it for him, Judge said. You watch a guy work his butt off. You know what kind of competitor he is, what kind of player he is, how, how much he's invested in us and what he's done. Everything we've asked him to do, he's done 100%. He was great during the virtual program in spring. He was much better, obviously, in person. You can really get a feel for the guy when you're in the same room a lot more and watching him work out on the field. He made a great deal of improvement as a receiver. He's one of the top special teams players in the league. And I mean, we know Cody Cole was a great special teams player. He was a pretty good uh, kick and punt returner whenever he was placed there. And he was even better as a gunner 
That's high praise though, saying he's one of the best in the league. I don't know if I would put him that high. Then again, I'm not out here looking at special teams players like that. Maybe I should be because it plays a bigger part of the game that everybody realizes and I'm very sure it's gonna play a huge part of the game for Giants this year, but high praise from Judge here. And then the article ends off with a longer quote saying, Listen, you hate seeing this happen to any player. That's why we have to practice the way we practice because we have to put guys in positions to play safely and keep them on the field. And I just want to say real quick, Cody Core's injury was a non-contact injury. So it did not happen during the physical practice. You know, the infamous at this point, uh, Tuesday night physical practice that the Giants had, it was not during that. It's unfortunate the way it happened. Hopefully his injury is something we could come back from full speed. I look forward to seeing this guy in the future. His personality, the way he competes, his physical ability, he's definitely the kind of guy we want to work with. Everyone on the team takes a blow when anyone has any kind of injury. That's just the way it is. We care about each other in the locker room. We want to see everybody succeed. We'll have to go ahead and look to replace positions at all spots. We hate it for Cody Core. We wish him well in his recovery. So of course, Judge, I mean, there was even an, um, a tweet saying that for everybody that thought Joe Judge is heartless or something like that, or he doesn't have a connection with the players, when Core went down, I can't remember which report tweeted, they said Judge immediately had a look of pure concern on the face because he cares for the kid. And you can see it in the words that he's saying here. This is not really a generic response to any, you know, special teams player that will go down where a coach would say, you know, it's a terrible situation. We hope he'd recover and whatnot. Judge fully gave like basically an entire essay on Cody Core, his impact on the team and how much he respects his game and his preparation. And I expect that because once again, Judge was a special teams guy. He knows how to connect with these guys. He knows how they work and their habits. And that's going to extend to all over the team because he made it a habit before he came to the Giants to study more than just the special teams and more than just one position. So I, I like that a lot. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Put your comments down below, whether it's about Deion Lewis, Caden Smith, Graham Gano, or uh, the injured Cody Core. That's it for now. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.